So we're going to do a second fairly simple example to get you a, to give you a sense of how you can do some estimations as well um, using some of the equations that we've already started learning about. And this is where we can get actually an estimation where we estimate the acceleration of a car. How do you get an idea for values of acceleration, right? Acceleration of a car. And so we can say something about what we know about driving with cars. We know we can go from zero to 35 miles per hour. And we can sort of estimate about how long this takes. Say that it takes, I don't know, pick a number, five seconds or so. That seems reasonable. Hours obviously isn't reasonable, just to get a sense of the numbers here. So if we want to estimate the acceleration, what we've done is we're assuming a constant acceleration, which is not a bad assumption. It's not completely true, but it's not a bad assumption. So assuming constant acceleration, and then we um, we just need to convert things. We're finding an average acceleration here. So, right, if, but if it's constant, our average acceleration is equal to our instantaneous acceleration, right? If it's constant. So our acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And this is just looking for the magnitude. So we could say it would be in the i hat direction. But what we're really interested in is the magnitude of this, right? Magnitude with um, what looks like the absolute value sign. So that's just the size or the scalar that's associated with that. And so all we need to do is really do a conversion. So Google can help you out with this and you can find out that miles per hour is equal to uh, one mile per hour is equal to 0 0.447 meters per second. Just ask. Um, and then you can say to do the conversion, you can say if I want my V in meters per second, and those are the units we want to generally use in physics is MKS units. So we'll say meters, uh, sorry, 35 miles per hour. And then we'll use this trick that you probably learned in chemistry where you multiply by a one to convert your units. So I want meters per second on the top. And I want miles per hour in the bottom. So I just fill things in. I've got a one and 0 0.0447. And so when I do this, this gives me 15.6 meters Per second and then I'm basically done with this estimate. I then say that acceleration is the change in velocity. Change in velocity goes from 0 to 35 so it would be 15.6 meters per second final minus the initial all over the time five seconds and this becomes then three 3.1 if you want a meters per second squared. And so those are units for acceleration. It's meters per second squared because it's a change, a time that it takes for a velocity to change. And so that gives you sort of a feeling. So you have a sense, I hope, of what kind of speed that is. And if we're graphing it, again, I'll always kind of go to the graph. You can plot velocity versus time. The main thing on this problem is to get your conversion. 15.6 meters per second in a time of five seconds. If we plot that, if we assume it's linear, ooh, it's not very linear there. Then we get something that looks like this. And the slope in this case, the slope is our acceleration. Again, our rise over run, which we found before.